just want to start section 2.4 on biconditional statements. Let me just, just give you a quick recap of 2.3. We looked at statements of this form, which is read P implies Q, or if P then Q. Okay, those are the two common phrases. I did want to uh, remind you of, we talked about truth tables. We looked at the truth table for this, for this statement. So, yeah, let's write it up here. So, P and Q. Remember, truth table keeps track of all the different possible truth values for, for a statement involving more than one statement. So, P implies Q. We saw that there was only one case when P implies Q had a false, F for false. And that was when P is true, but Q is false. Okay, so it's true, false, true, true. So true, false, true, true, that's the uh, truth table for P implies Q. Okay, so 2.4 is related to this. Uh, 2.3 is it P implies Q. We're now going to talk about, well, is it, what if it's true that Q also implies P? And then we'll have if and only if statements, or what we call biconditional statements. So that's section 2.4. Biconditional statements. So consider this conditional statement. If n is prime, then n is odd or n equals 2. Okay, so this is a statement. Is this statement true or false? True. It's true. Every prime number is either odd or equals 2. 2 is the only prime number that's not, not, not odd. Okay? So this is a true, this is a true statement. So this is a conditional statement, if P then Q, right? So, if P then Q, okay? Where P is the statement N is prime, Q is the statement N is odd or N equals two. So, now, um, what if I switch, <coughs> excuse me, the, uh, the order here and I say, this, look at this statement, if, if n is odd, or n is 2, then n is prime. Okay, another statement. True or false? False. False. So, this is, this would be if, if q, then p. Right. So we have P, P implies Q here, we have Q implies P here. One's true and one's false, so clearly they can't mean the same thing. They don't mean the same thing. It's, it's not, saying P implies Q is not saying the same thing as saying Q implies P. These statements mean totally different things. Okay? So it's very important that you, you, know, you get your, your implications in the right, in the right uh, direction. You know, P implies Q is not the same as Q implies P. But there are some statements for which P implies Q <coughs> and Q implies P are both true statements. <coughs> okay? That one if you say equal to plus or minus Q. Sorry? If N was equal to plus or minus Q, would it be true in both cases? Uh, N equals plus or minus Q? <coughs> well, not, not every odd number is prime. So I can, I can find an odd number that's not prime. So, like, nine. Nine is odd, you know. So, so if, if n is nine, then n is odd, or n is equal to two. That's a true statement. But but n is not prime. Not, nine is not prime. Okay. So so it can happen though that that p implies q and q implies p are both true statements. In this in that case, we have a new symbol for for it's called an if and only a statement or a biconditional statement, and it's a double-sided arrow. 
So, <coughs> let me give you an example. Suppose... Okay, so we're talking about real numbers here, a real number x, okay? So, I mean, I, I probably should have started off with saying that, you know, n, n is an integer in the first, you know, so we're not, we're, you know, what our universal set is here. <coughs> here I'm just talking about integers. <coughs> here I'm talking, now, now I'm sort of talking about just uh, real numbers, okay? So suppose x is a real number. Let's look at this statement. So here's my, here's my P implies Q statement. If x equals 1 or x equals negative 1, then the absolute value of x equals 1. If x equals 1 or x equals negative 1, then the absolute value of x equals 1. Is this true or false? Mm -hmm. True. Let's look at the statement Q implies P. So how would you how would you say Q implies P? If the absolute value of x equals one, then x is equal to one, or x is equal to negative one. Yeah, you just have to change the word then to if, and that, you know, for sure. So if Alpha value of x equals 1, then x equals 1, or x equals negative 1. So remember, I specified x is, a, x is a real number. Do you agree this is true? Do you believe that? And if I tell you that a number, a real number is alpha value is 1, I, I must be only talking about one or, or one or two of two numbers, 1 or negative 1. So look at this. P implies Q, but Q also implies P. So both those statements are true. So the symbol, we could, we could actually kind of wrap this up. Instead of saying P implies Q and Q implies P, which is kind of cumbersome, we could just, we, we write this symbol. P not equivalent to P if and only if Q. That's one way of saying it. So this this symbol right here stands for you can you can read this p if and only if q. So one way of saying so you could read the sentence uh, x equals one or x equals negative one if and only if the absolute value of x is one. Okay. So this this thing right here means the same thing as saying p implies q. And Q implies P. So, you know, this is kind of cumbersome to write. And it's kind of, you know, it's like a double-sided arrow, right? That P is pointing to the Q, but Q is also pointing back to the, to the P. So it's kind of uh, a really nice shorthand for this, this combination, P implies Q and Q implies P. All right.
So I always do quizzes on Wednesday, right after that, I'm mean, it's a Monday. Right? And I didn't set in stone that I would have to also have to collect homework on on this. Right? Put myself some leeway, right? That's what I was looking at. So I said that kind of what I thought of my, but I didn't write that in my, my syllabus. I think that's a yeah, sneaky thing that professors do about writing their syllabus. Like, at any point, the, the professor reserves the right to alter these contracts in the middle of the you know, whatever. But uh, I think what's, what's best, you know, so if we have, oh, next Wednesday, you know, uh, like nine days away, homework, then maybe you're going to wait eight and a half days to start your homework. Now, you know, that'd be the worst case scenario. And you know, that wouldn't be ideal. For the test, and if I if I collect the homework assignment, then you have a test the very next day. Not that class break is ideal either. So I I think it'd be best if we turn it on Monday. Give a week. I can I can make this due on Wednesday this week. This is so short. Um, I give you guys the, the weekend too. So if I if I sign this due on on Monday. the third. I can give it back to you. We go Wednesday. We go over go on Wednesday. I have a test on the phone. I'm thinking. And you know, I post the, the due date for some. I post them on Blackboard, right? Didn't I do that? Yeah. I think so. I think you put the red at the top where I'm going to see the thing. Yeah. So. You know, we lost, we lost the Monday class and we kind of gone off every day and five days. Yeah. Right, so. yeah. 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 The tenants and the shoes, you guys all got here, so we'll do that, we'll do that. This week's homework on Monday. Okay. Alright. Let's talk about five. The truth that we can get more confidence than just a statement, a key few. You can have what you like. What we're doing in tables is looking at all the different uh, truth values of, of a combination of, of many statements. And why we do that is because we want to see, we want to, it can be useful to have equivalent elements. Uh, okay, just like we saw in the last section, if and only if Q equivalent to P implies Q and Q implies Q. So why would it be useful? Well, the useful when you mean statements. Because it, a proof of if and only if Q usually works like a proof of P implies Q and a proof of Q implies P. Okay, so that's why I use truth tables. Um, we won't use these in chapter two. We'll just use the facts that we've learned from truth. Certain statements are equivalent. So in order to prove one, it's often better to prove a statement. Okay, so that's the goal. So we want to. So let's look. At, think about this. P Q. Not both. Right? Radical definition of or, if I just said P or Q, it could be, that statement could be true if, if P is true or Q is true or both of them are true. But now it's like exclusive or. What I mean here is like, P, you know, this, I'm true if P is true or if Q is true, but not both. Not only are both true. Either or kind of a statement. Sorry? P implies P and Q. Well, let's look at uh, how I can write this. How about this? So P or Q. So uh, let's write this way. P or When you see the word in, in a set, sentence, it's actually implied in, in some depth translate as and. So, and I 
say and not both, both would be P and Q. So a P or Q and the negation of that. So P and Q. So this, hopefully what we want to check for this, this looks like what we mean. This, this, this statement should be, you should have trues when uh, P is true and Q is false. Q, but P is false. And the only time you want this to be true. Not, and then if P and Q are both true, this to be a true statement. Okay, so this is not the exclusive either or. All right, so, yeah, I can take it over there. So let's make it true. P is true, true, false, false. You know, and if when we start, especially when we start homeworks on truth, let's let's try to. I mean, there's a rule that's written in a, you know, uh, a law book somewhere that says you have to start your truth date with P. It has to be true, true, false, false, and Q, false, true, false. But if we all stick attention, then all of our true tables should pull. And it's really helpful when your instructor is grading homeworks and things. Because I have, you know, I've asked where students have actually have actually do have correct truth tables, but they use different orderings, and it's like I have to it's a lot easier for me to just look at the last key if you if you it matches what my column is. We can see I right, see if you did it right. Okay, so we need a column for so you make a when these truth tables, you have one of these really good expressions. I make a column for each piece. So I'm gonna have a column for P or Q. Okay. P or Q is true when you have at least one true. Okay. So it's gonna look like true, 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 false. Right? And then you have and Q. This is true when both of them are, are true. The first row, true and false, false, false. Then I'm going to another row with a negation of P and Q. So I'm just going to flip all the trues and false from the previous column. False, true. 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 Let's look at the and statement. P or and not P. So if I have two uh, true or false. Where am I? So I'm looking at I'm looking at P Q, this one and then this one. So true, false. They're not. They're not both true. So that's right. True, true. Same as true. True, true, true. And then false, true. The and statement is false. So look at when P or Q. There's true, true, true. Now this statement, P or Q, but not P and Q, now we have a false, true, true, false. So it's the way that, that loop statement in the first row. Okay, so that's exactly what we mean when you have this exclusive or, P or Q, but not both. Okay. So this is an example of how you would do a more truth table. You know, once you get, you probably don't need a lot of these individual steps. You, you might even skip right here once you get used to this. Like, you can just see, okay, you know the P and Q in your head, and then the negation of you, you can probably do that. But, you know, for starters, it's probably to, to break it to individual statements. And then when you hear to the final statement you're trying to write the truth table for, then you, it's a lot easier. Certainly I wouldn't want this just from looking at P and Q. I mean, just, you probably do it and it's just work. I mean, this 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 shouldn't be a little individual click would be a whole lot of work. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay. Oh, before
before, let's look at this thing right here over again, right? P implies Q was true. 